Hey everybody, my name is Matt Yoakum. I am back here again today with Pro Sound Effects, and today we're making an exciting announcement, and that is bringing you Core 5. Core 5 is the latest version of the library bundles that Pro Sound Effects is offering, and they come with some amazing updates. This year, they're including over 19 new individual libraries within these bundles with over 17,000 new files, totaling up to over 490 gigs. So we're talking about almost a half a terabyte worth of new sounds, and I'm super excited to get into them with you today. Some of the most notable sound effects libraries that have been added and some of the ones that I'm the most excited for is there are two new general library volumes that are being included, which are volumes four and five. I love that because general libraries provide just a wealth of different sounds that you may not think of or you may not go to specifically for within a specialized library. And they're great to have for people, especially starting out. On top of the general libraries that have been added, there's also a bunch of new specialized libraries that have been added that I'm super excited for, including new vehicles from Watson Wu, there's Kinetic, there's Data, there's Extended Techniques, there's Tortured Memories, there's Energetic Forms, Rain, and there's a whole new Richard King collection as well, among others. Uh, I can't also fail to mention Anime Volume 2, because the first pack was so amazing, now there's a second one. So those are just a few examples of the new libraries that have been added to Core 5. And if you already owned Core 4, you know how much variety and how much quality was already present. So for Pro Sound Effects to be adding over 17 new libraries is pretty amazing to do within a year's span. You get tons of different libraries from this pack from award-winning sound recordists such as Richard King and Mark Mangini. And then just to talk a little bit about the metadata, you know, these sounds are organized using the UCS standard, which is amazing because it creates a really easy to read and unified approach for all of the metadata. Metadata has been one of those things in sound libraries that's been pretty difficult to nail down just because everybody has their own preferences and ways of going about things. So the universal category system, which has over 600 individual categories within the pro sound effects libraries is a great way of uh, standardizing the metadata and making everything simple and consistently easy to find. And of course, today I'm going to be looking at these sound effects libraries with you within SoundQ, which is Pro Sound Effects's organization and library tool. It's a great organization tool. It offers you a lot of flexibility in the sense that when you purchase a Pro Sound Effects library, you actually have several options for the ways in which you access that library. One of them being you can order a hard drive directly from Pro Sound Effects, they can send to you, and then you'll locally have it on a disk. You can also then use the Pro Sound Effects Download Manager to download the libraries locally to an existing hard drive or server that you might have. And then lastly, SoundQ offers you the option to browse all of the libraries that you've purchased, as well as the ones that you haven't purchased yet, uh, through the SoundQ cloud system, which is really nice. I'll show that to you as well. Uh, and then you can choose to either download those locally or keep them in the cloud and access them that way. So there's a lot of flexibility. It's great if you have limited storage options at home, or maybe you've got plenty of storage, or you want some additional new storage by ordering the hard drives that they offer. So be sure to check out those methods, whatever works for you. Flexibility is the name of the game. Uh, and yeah, let's go ahead and dive into the libraries and show you what's come new to Core 5. All right, so here we are inside of SoundQ. Uh, I wanted to show you just briefly, um, over here on the left, you can see uh, SoundQ comes with a free sound effects library as well as some free music. Uh, and there's also integration with freesound.org, which is super helpful. Uh, I've turned it on so that I'm only searching uh, my purchases today. Uh, I'm going to be showing you uh, Core 5 Pro Plus collection, uh, and uh, I have just the new libraries down here. So what I did was I created a local database. So this is super easy to manage. Um, over here on the right of my, outside of my screen, I've got a folder with the new data library. It's as easy as dragging and dropping that folder, uh, and then I can tell it where I want to go. So if I want it to go to the new Core 5, I can hit Import. It's going to import those. It's giving me a little warning just because I have a couple of like server hidden files that it's recognizing or not waves. Uh, and anyway, so it imports those here and now they're part of my collection. So if I click on my new core five and I type in data, 
Here's my stuff. Uh, it brings up some other stuff from the extended technique sounds, but here's the data library. It's nice. You can just uh, click and search by library. Uh, I usually just leave it in the default mode, but, uh, but yeah, this is just a simple way to go through stuff. So I figured we would just go ahead and take a look through the new core five sounds. Let's just explore some of the libraries and see what we come across. Okay, so here's some of the samples from Anime 2. Uh, I love the volume one of this library. Just a lot of creative, fun, modular sounds. So let's just take a listen through some of them. Those are nice and crunchy. Nice and fat. I love that there's a uh, DBZ uh, thing noted here. These would have fit nicely with the, the punch uh, tutorial I did. Okay, so it sounds like there's some non-modular sound in here. It sounds like there's some practical recordings as well this time, which is nice. So I bet even these are fun in reverse. Sound like little power up moments. All right, let's take a look at some of the other ones. Let's go to, um, let's look at the feedback library from Richard King. So if I type in feedback, let's search by library. And then yeah, here's, so here's the feedback library. Let's just punch through some of these. So, uh, I mean, I think these have tons of practical design application use cases. One of the best things that I like about any sound library system, and SoundQ has it right here for us, is the ability to do variable speed playback, which will adjust the pitch as well. So let's, uh, let's mess around with the pitch. Let's go higher and lower and see what it sounds like. Yeah, you can see how... So like those slowed down can make for some amazing like tension sounds in the background of a scene. You could see easy like horror or like suspense uses for those. I could see that being like an element in a force field. You can even see doing a variable, uh, you know, speed modulation like that to get like cool power ups and power downs. Let's take a look at this extended techniques library. I'm gonna uh, type this in extended techniques. Let's see, this is, so this is a library. So what's cool about SoundQ2 here is you can investigate the metadata for any of these sounds that you click on over here on the right. So like if I scroll down here, it'll tell me Richard King. I've also set, um, if you right click up here in the column view options, you can set it to show whatever categories you like. I like to see the artist just because I like to know, you know, who's doing what. So I've got uh, showing here that the extended techniques is by Richard King. Slowing down is just like an instant sound design cheat code for cool sounds. So that's a, you know, an AM radio fluorescent light bulb that's been pitched down to sound like a force field. It's just a great sound. Oh, so let's do it from the beginning. That's 
a great sound. So, you know, I'm obviously just messing with the pitch here. I mean, this is what we do. This is what I do all day long when I'm looking at sound libraries is just see what the potential is with them. It's got a lot of character to it. So this library has got lots of kind of like droney, vibrating, kind of interesting sounds in here that you don't typically find in a normal general library. All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at uh, Tortured Memories. Uh, and this is by Mark Mangini. Uh, so we've got some fun design in here. Now, as you'll notice, this is a quad recording. Um, you know, right now, for the purposes of this video, everything is uh, being folded down to stereo, so you won't be able to hear the uh, surround channels. But uh, it's amazing that you get multi-channel fi files in here because you can import these into Pro Tools, and you've immediately, uh, or any other DAW that'll support multi-channel, and you've immediately got like a sense of space and an immersive quality to the sounds. Um, that's another thing you can search by here is the channel number over on the side, so it looks like all of these recordings are quad, actually, which is great. Let's try one of these at half speed. Demonic murmur. Oops, it moved on me. Well, this is hellish squeak. There's some amazing sounds in there. I mean, this is like, th this is the sort of library where it's like a designed application where if you need stuff quick to get through or you need some inspiration, some new ideas, these are like ready-made sounds that can be put into your timeline as is without much need for manipulation. And it's gonna sound great right off the bat. Um, let's pick just a couple more libraries here to go through. Let's pick something a little more practical. Let's go for our rain library. Uh, which is also delivered to us by Mark Mangini. And as you can see, there's a variety of multi-channel and stereo formats here. Let's just stick to some of the stereo ones. Such great metallic quality in that. Off of a windshield. More sheet metal. That's great. It's got some uh, natural carbides and some thunder. More splatty concrete. more of a delicate rain uh, sound. I might use this like in a scene just after it's rained if you just needed some really light textures of, you know, le uh, leaves still dripping and stuff in a forest or, you know, wherever you might be. Some gutter splatter. Oh, and now we're, now we're into the gen collection. Uh, I may have played a couple Gen Collection, my bad. I should have sorted by library there. But either way, uh, rain is an amazing thing to have a lot of variation in in your library because, you know, there's there's so many different textures. And when you can, if you've, if you've got like a composition of a scene and you've got a car on the left and a roof on the right and, you know, somebody standing in the middle having a conversation, you can place these textures around to create this very like sort of wide soundscape that also feels very specific and tailored to what you have on screen. So having all of these different textures and these different mediums that the rain is interacting against is honestly a really amazing tool set. Um, okay, let's take a listen to some, uh, 
there's a library called uh, Waves and Wind and Water. This is volume two, and this is by the guys over at Blackguard SMG. So let's take a listen to some of these. Again, a lot of multi-channel recordings here. Let's uh, stick to stereo for you know so that we can hear everything. a great recording. What I like about this is a lot of times with waves, especially on a windy or a wavy day, is there's a lot of diffuse noise in the background, so it's hard to get individual waves sometimes, depending on where you're at. Um, there's a lot you can just see the dynamic range in this recording, so that's excellent. We've got some nice sizzle detail in there. Much calmer water here. Let's try some heavy waves. River rapids as well. Great water detail there. Nice diffuse waves in the background. Again, this is sort of similar to the to the rain ideas. Like, there's all these different. There's so much character that the ocean emotes, and uh, different sort of levels of intensity and perspective that are so useful when you're cutting something on screen or whether you're cutting something impressionistically sometimes we need sounds to be larger than life and there's a lot of variety in here all the way from the really small detailed watery detail all the way back to like really wide diffuse sounds so excellent amount of variation within this library uh, and let's pick one last one let's go for let's see what's in the kinetic library Again, brought to us by Mark Mangini. That's really fun. There's like a, an electrical zap. The thing, I mean, obviously Mark Mangini is an incredible designer, so it's no surprise here, but what I like about these recordings is they don't sound like super generic whooshes. There's so much character in all of these and a lot of weight. You can tell there was a lot of thought process put through them. That one's awesome. I can tell in these there's like a, a combination between synthetic elements and real recorded elements. There's just such a great variety within here. I mean, I find this with all the pro sound effects libraries, and honestly, this is what I look for when I'm buying a new library is this. I want a library that gives me character, that gives me a combination of ready to use sounds as well as what I would consider like source or construction materials in order to build new sound design from. And I think this Core 5 collection of new libraries offers such a wide variety of both. So it's really an amazing asset that you can add to your collection. Pro Sound Effects offers these in different levels. Today I was showing you through the Core 5 Pro Plus collection, and there's just such a vast variety of brand new materials to go through here. They're all inspiring. And I didn't even show you through all the libraries because there's just not enough time. But thank you for coming to check this out again today. I'm super excited for everybody to get their hands onto the new Core 5 material. Check out the individual libraries. Check out the library bundles. They've got them set up in different tiers depending on your needs. You know, I think what happens a lot of the time is when people are just getting started out doing sound effects editing, one of the very first things that they realize is that suddenly you need to have this like you know, wealth of material to even begin cutting from. And it can be really hard if you feel like you need to go buy a bunch of different little libraries and to know which ones are well curated and which ones might not be and the metadata is inconsistent between them. And what Pro Sound Effects does so well and makes so easy for us to get started is you can purchase one of their bundles and you know that you're getting a very cohesive 
homogenous library that's got all of the metadata done immaculately. Uh, they're all really well organized and they've been curated from top recordists and designers, you know, literally the best in the industry. If you like what you heard in this library walkthrough, go and check out some of the libraries. I mean, these are all worth checking out and also be sure to check out the collections at hand. So thanks again for joining us today. Happy cutting and we'll see you guys next time.